Hi again to another episode of Real Estate Investor TV at www.rei-tv.com. Today's Newbie Tuesday. I know some of you are getting excited about that because we get in, we get emails now. People asking us what's on the next Newbie Tuesday show and that type of thing. So here it is. Today we're talking about today we're we're talking about buying houses for long term and for a long term investment strategy. But we're talking about and this is directed to people that aren't even full-time real estate investors and really aren't even part-time real estate investors. Today we're talking to people who want to earn some money in real estate over the long term, but who don't want to flip houses, who don't want to do rehabs, who really aren't into anything besides a traditional investment besides the stock market and other traditional investments. So even if you have no inclination to become a full-time investor, you can make some money, a lot of money, over the long term as an investor without owning a lot of houses. You could buy less houses in your lifetime than I bought in the last year and you could become wealthy and there's many people that have done it. Uh, so I'm talking about traditional real estate investing, the way people have always done it long before the nothing down and the flip this house and that type of thing came to be. So I'm talking to professionals, people who have a little bit of money to spend and they're kind of worried about their retirement. I'm talking about I'm even talking to college students at this point. I'm talking to people that are really any age, but especially people who are in their younger to middle age who are a little nervous about retiring someday. I mean, let's face it, Social Security isn't what it used to be. It's, you know, they keep saying it's going to be gone whenever. You know, you read all the different reports and you hear different things. I think it is inevitable, and we all know, though, at some point, Social Security. It's just not going to be there. And even if it is there, who can live on $800 a week or whatever it is that, that most people are going to be eligible for? Um, also, you know, in the old days, you got a job, you worked there for 40 years, you had a Kool-Aid party, they gave you a gold watch, and you could retire with a decent pension or retirement plan. Nowadays, people don't work at one company that long. They, you move around through your lifetime, so most people don't have a pension plan, they don't have a retirement, they can't count on Social Security, what can they count on? You can count on real estate. Now granted, I'm not going to argue with you, real estate is down right now, and that's one of the reasons I'm having this talk, because it always goes back up. Over the long term, real estate always improves over the long term. It's, you know, this is kind of a fluke that it's down now. It's not the first time it's been down. It's been down in the past, and it always goes back up. So, um, I mean, let's face it, it's a commodity. We're never going to, that, that once it's gone, it's gone. There's only so much dirt. Once all the dirt is sold, there's no more dirt. So, uh, and that's what you're really buying. You're buying something that there's, there's, there's not. It's not like there's going to be more of it in the future. So, um, we're really talking about a buy and hold. Now, it could be a traditional buy and hold. And when I say buy and hold, that's a property that you're going to buy and that you're going to rent out to somebody with the full intention of renting it over a long period of time and making your money that way. Uh, you could do a traditional buy and hold where you find a rental house, buy it, get a mortgage, make the mortgage payments, and rent the house out. Um, the nice thing about it is you won't have to make the mortgage payments if you're smart about it. Your tenants will make those mortgage payments and pay those off houses off for you over the long term. You could also do a subject too. Right now, every I, I don't want to say every day because there's some days that we don't, but I would say almost every day we have leads come across our desk where people are willing to sign their houses over to us give us the house subject to their mortgage. In other words, Mr. Nick, please take my house. I'll sign it over to you. I'll sign the deed. You can have the house. Just make my mortgage payments until you sell the house. Well, you can do that on a long-term basis. You can buy the house, leave their mortgage on it, and make their mortgage payments forever until you're ready to sell the house or until the mortgage is gone. You could even do this with a lease option where you could lease the house. I, I don't suggest it as highly, but it can't be something you can do on a temporary basis. If your credit isn't good enough to get a mortgage, you could buy a house with somebody, lease with an option to purchase, and then in six months or a year, a lender is going to look at it more like a refinance, and you know you could switch, you could switch the, you know you could buy it at that point when your credit is ready to do it. But sub two is perfect. You know I've bought so many sub two houses that I planned on in a year or two my tenant buying, but the tenants don't end up buying them most of the time anyways. So in a sense, some of those are turning into long terms and long term investments for me. <clears throat> And I sure like looking at that equity at the end of every year. You know, I get my inventory back from my from my accountant, and you know the inventory of properties I own, and whew, 
it just keeps going up and up. So, um, in any case, these are property that you're going to buy and then you're going to rent it out. Now, if you would like, you can manage these properties yourself. Or if you want to be totally hands off, you could hire a management company. Right now is a good time to buy these houses because they are cheap. A couple of years ago, you know, mortgages, I mean, mortgage rates are real low right now too. But the houses that you take subject to from people where they'll sell it to you and let you make their mortgage payments, in most of those cases, those are houses they bought two years ago, three years ago when mortgage rates were really, really attractive. So now you're not only going to get prices at great deals, you're going to, you know, you're going to not pay much for these houses, but you're going to have a nice low mortgage payment too. Over time, you know the interest rates are going to go up. Well, guess what? When those interest rates go up, Yours isn't. It's going to stay the same. Now, some points when you do this. If you're going to take a house subject to the mortgage, make sure you look at the interest, not the interest, at the mortgage, and make sure that it's a fixed interest rate. Make sure that that mortgage isn't going to go up and up when the, uh, when the interest rates go up. Make sure that you're, if you're going to buy a house subject to a mortgage and leave that seller's mortgage on it, make sure that you know about that mortgage. You know who the lender is. You know it's up to date when you buy it. Basically, you ask the seller to show you a copy of their latest statement. They'll show that it's up to date, and that'll show you what the interest rate is. You also want to get them to sign an authorization to release information form. It's a form that'll let you talk to the mortgage lender on their behalf, so you can confirm these things. Okay, but I'm not giving a course in sub twos right now, but those are a couple things you want to do. Now think about it. What if you bought two houses a year? Either got a mortgage for them, which, meh, I don't do it. But it's, it, I mean, that's, people have become filthy, stinking rich doing that, so there's nothing wrong with it. But what if you bought two houses a year using any of these techniques? In 10 years, you'd own 20 homes. Think about the math. In 10 years, you'd own 20 homes. In 20 years, most of those homes you'll only owe about half on. So let's say you bought all $300,000 houses. You bought a house today that cost $300,000. In 20 years, let's assume it's a 30-year loan. In 20 years, you're probably going to owe about 100 to 100. Let's say you owe $150,000 on that house after 20 years. You're probably going to own less, but I'm trying to shy. You know, I'd rather under promise or whatever because it's going to depend on a lot of things it's going to be a three hundred thousand dollar house it's going to depend on how much the mortgage was when you took it over if you put a down payment down which i don't like to do but it's going to depend on different things the interest rate so but let's just say you bought two houses a year for 10 years at the end of 10 years you own 20 houses at the end of 20 years the two houses you bought in that first year that were worth three hundred thousand then that you owe a hundred and fifty thousand on now are going to be worth about f at least four hundred thousand. They might be worth seven hundred or eight hundred thousand dollars in twenty years. I mean, twenty years ago, houses that were eighty thousand dollars are now worth five hundred thousand dollars, right? So, but let's think conservatively. So, after twenty years, the two houses you bought in your first year are now worth four hundred to four hundred fifty thousand dollars, and you only owe one hundred fifty thousand dollars. Do the math. You've got $300,000 equity in each of those houses. So after 20 years, you sell those two houses you bought this in the first year you started doing this, and you put four, five, six hundred thousand dollars $600,000 in your pocket. In the 21st year, you sell the two houses you bought in your second year. You put another four, five hundred thousand dollars $500,000 in your pocket. In the 23rd year, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So buy two houses a year. In 20 years, you sell two houses a year. And you will be set for life. I can't guarantee it because who knows, you know, there might be a, we might be gone in 20 years because of a nuclear something, okay? But, but when you do the math, it works. If I would have started buying houses 20 years ago, two houses a year at 80000 each, they'd be worth five, 600000 I'd have a million dollars a year in equity. So it is something to consider. Now be smart. Do your homework. Learn how to do it. Don't just run out and buy houses. There's plenty of investors who have full-blown programs on how to buy a house subject to. There's plenty of books you can buy on how to rent a house, how to manage tenants. There's all kinds of things you can do. Now, I suggest you sell these houses uh, with a lease option. I mean, you rent them out. Don't just rent them out and put a tenant in there. Do a lease with an option to buy. Because most people that buy a house lease with an option, they don't end up buying it anyways. But they give you four or $5,000 up front. So here's how it works. As you buy each of these houses, you find your first tenant, he gives you $5,000. And I just collected $4,000 yesterday on one of these. But he gives you $5,000 as an option fee. OK? 
Okay? You put that in a separate account. You buy your second house, you rent it out, you get five thousand, and it might be three thousand, it might be eight thousand. But you instead of using that money to live off of, put those option fees in a separate account. Then, if for some reason you have a house where you have a trouble with a tenant and you have to evict them or you have to evict them and do some work, you've got a nest egg to do that work with. You've got some money put aside. At the end of 10 years, you'll have close to $100,000 in that account alone if you haven't had to use it. And you could use that money if you, to live on if you want as well. But I suggest renting all these houses leased with an option. The other reason I suggest renting a lease with an option to buy is when I sell a house leased with an option to buy, I tell the tenant and they sign off that they are responsible for all maintenance. I have never had a toilet, a phone call because of a toilet clogged at midnight, like you hear the horror stories of. Because every house I rent, I sell it, I rent it out, lease with an option of purchase, they're responsible for all maintenance on the house. So I don't have to worry about it. So if you sell them all with a lease option, that's how you fill them. You get money up front that you can put away as a little nest egg in case you need to put some money into these, and you don't have to worry about maintenance. And you know what? You do have to give them the option to buy it. Again, most of them don't. But what if one of them do? Then you don't have to wait your 20 years. You're going to make, well, not as much, but you'll make 10, 20, 30,000, $40,000 each time one of those buy. That's more what traditional investors do when they buy a house subject to. But we're not talking about that. Today we're targeting brand new people who don't want to be full-time investors, who love their job, and just want to make some extra money. I hope you understood all this. I know I got a little confused talking it to you, telling it to you. <laughs> Um, there's a little thing, make comments, push that button up above, send me an email if you are confused and I'd be happy to discuss it with you. Um, we're going to have the grand opening of the site in the next few weeks where we're going to start having uh, a couple calls a month, at least one call a month where you can call and ask questions about anything you want in real estate investing and it'll be a you know general call so we'll have more than one person on it but I'll answer all kinds of questions I'm going to start bringing in special guests there's all kinds of things going on in the near future stay tuned watch us daily thanks for listening now go make an offer